This is kind of like the wave in the stadium. The folks on this side of the room have finished eating and it's working its way this way. So um, while, while we're in that in the stage as some are finished, some are just beginning and most of you in the middle are, are somewhere in the middle of that. Um, let's thank the folks from Scott's Cafe again. <laughs> Coming to visit today and bringing the food. Yes. All right. The first first part of this is you get to ask questions, and we get to try to answer those questions uh, for each other. I think we've got all the key role players here, so I don't have to answer any of them when they get asked. Um, I've got Karen and Ricky both here, DK's here on the technology, Bud's here on the facilities, Bruno's here to help Bud on the facilities. Um, so, you know, I saw Sue, she's ready to answer the, the finance questions. So what are the questions you all have at this point on November 11th? Okay, we're good, we'll see you. Really, y'all have nothing? Okay, we've either done a tremendous job of communicating or y'all have given up on us, one or the other. Okay, we have one. I don't know the answer to that question, but we'll find out. She's asking about uh, future uses of Scott's Cafe to provide food here at Region 10, and we will work on that and get an answer. Okay. Yes, I did. I, I remember that. Yeah, if you, if you show up at the right time on the right day, you never know what's going to happen. I gave him candy as he was sitting in his new employee orientation. Yeah. That's, First of all, I forgot. We have to do this. One of, one of the rules here is that if you ask a question, you have to stand up, introduce yourself to everybody, and tell us what your primary responsibility is. So, stand up, introduce yourself. Justin. I'm sorry, I asked the question. And Justin's expertise is... You can't be. Justin's expertise is... Consultant inside teaching and learning for alternative assessment. Yeah. Alternative assessment. Okay, now. Justin, let's see if I got this question right. He asked, he knows there's been some culture change type of things going on here in Region 10 recently. Yes, that's true. And he asked what the feedback from the LEAs are. The feedback I'm getting is very positive. Yeah, I'm sorry, you don't have to speak that <laughs> By the way, we do high fives here. Right. Um, <laughs> The LEAs are responding very well to that. I get compliments emailed periodically. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to read one from the superintendent. But I also pick it up uh, from you all talking about um, the folks from districts and charters coming in. Um, I also pick it up from unusual sources, such as um, people who work for TASA and people who work for the Rural Schools Association. Um, the charter school state is the state charter school association president or executive director, whatever his title is, called me one time about uh, three weeks ago and he said, I don't know exactly what you're doing differently from everybody else, but we hear compliments from y'all's charter school and about you. We never hear compliments about other service centers from other charter schools. So I, obviously we're doing some things right and I, I I think you can look around and see, and as you get more accustomed to being here, Region 10, you'll understand why. Great place. What else we got? I was just going to comment. Wait, uh, name first. My name is David Ray. I'm program coordinator for Homeless. There we go. Foster care, and I do whatever Jim Ray's tells me to do. <laughs> good idea. So, uh, I was so she knows your evaluation. It's a good idea to do that. And other things in the sun. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to comment on School Street. It's worked well for me. I've gotten two reimbursements now through School Street. And I was just going to ask the finance department how it's 
Who? Terry? Somebody? School stream? What, what was the question? I was just saying it's worked really well for me. Awesome. <laughs> Seeing on your side if things are going well. Yes, I mean, we've had some growing pains as people get used to it. Yes. I need that. Okay. We've had some growing pains as people get used to it, but the departments that have been on it the longest really, really like it. So I'm pleased to hear that, and those of you that are just coming on and maybe experiencing some growing pains, I hope it will smooth out for you and you'll like it. And we've also implemented the ACH deposit. I think you all like that, right? Yeah. But thank you, David, for saying that. I think it's going to be a good thing. And we've got more to come after the office. Okay. Sue, so, since you've got the microphone, do you got anything you need to tell everybody? Well, what I would like to say is thanks to everybody. Um, we had our auditors here a couple weeks ago. And you know, all the rules and compliance and procedures we have to follow because we spend federal funds, they were here for a week, five strong, and they didn't find any. What? <laughs> Thanks to everybody for that because I think that was a pretty good accomplishment for the whole team here. And uh, the other thing I want to say is we did run travel checks yesterday, but because today is a bank holiday, uh, I've heard from some of you that you got your money and I've heard from others that you did not. Um, and I think that has to do with the receiving bank and what their policy is on a holiday. Um, so if you didn't get it today, I'm sorry that you should definitely get it for money. Questions for Sue? It is an easy crowd. <laughs> Other random questions before I hand the microphone to the next unsuspecting person? Bud, tell us a little bit about how. <laughs> Elevators, for instance. <laughs> Always. Um, everything's going great in housing. You'll see that we're putting up some new, we have some new signs going up. The, the little post signs are being put in at the parking lot over at Abrams. There's a little sign there designating where the parking is. We've had that before. They replaced the B sign out here. The marquees, due to weather, that taking a little longer. So they hope to be coming out next week and putting our two new marquee signs in with our new logo, new colors for the both buildings. Um, we have had some elevator problems this year. We're not this year, but this week. We have called them out here five different times. Each time they come, they replace something and say, we fixed it. And then the next day we have an issue. So we called them out five times. They finished about 5 o'clock last night. They called Bruno to let him know that they finished the elevator and it should be working fine now. Who so was the first one on it this morning? <laughs> Mike Michael? Did it work? Hey, that's my name. Wonderful. <laughs> so, everybody in housing is just trying to keep things rolling with all y'all's trainings. If you need anything, let us know. Um, we are probably being Switching to a new ticketing system, it's called School Dude. If you've worked in a school district, you've probably used it before, but that's how you'll put in work orders. That'll be coming, and we'll give you some more information on that when that comes out. Okay. Any questions? Housing facility questions? Yeah, I've got one. Uh, Mark McGann, <laughs> Grand Sirs. Um, the question I have is about the trees along the, the east side there. It looks like a lot of, some of them are being stressed. Uh, I was wondering if we had any idea what we ought to do about that. We're going to be, we have, we do have land fear coming out. That's our groundskeeping crew. They're going to be doing a lot of trimming on the trees, um, getting them up off the ground where they're supposed to be above the cars. Um, some of our trees along this side are having some issues. If they continue to de digress, we'll probably have to have them removed. But we're, we're looking at that and we have land care coming out to do the trimming on them now. Okay. Anything else for housing?
Ricky, talk to us about architects and renovations of things. I love this topic. Uh, we are in the, uh, as y'all know, we have uh, hired two architectural firms, BLK and Huckabee, who uh, design the renovations for the Spring Valley building and the Abrams building. BLK is assigned to Spring Valley, Huckabee to uh, Abrams. Uh, we are in the, um, I call the uh, charrette design process. Uh, all of your uh, uh, directors have been asked to uh, submit names uh, for, uh, to be on the uh, uh, facility planning master de uh, design team. Uh, we are meeting with the uh, bring up one time with the uh, for the Abel building. Uh, BLK will be meeting next week with that group, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we will be meeting through January uh, on the design and modifications and um, uh, uh, with those uh, those two different groups of, of people. And hopefully, we will have that process finalized by, by the end of January. Uh, we took a we took a little trip uh, yesterday to uh, Michigan, uh, a group of bibleists. Uh, we will look at furnishings, furnishings, and uh, the way that they are on using um, one of this entry design and the classroom flexibility. Not not only classroom flexibility uh, in, in the school district, but flexibility in furnishings for the school district. I've got a lot of great ideas, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to utilize that information. Uh, to assist in the overall uh, redesign of these wonderful training rooms. Okay. Any questions on that? Who's been a part of the charrette process so far? Interesting? Very good. Beneficial? Great. Let's go along. Anything else? Questions on that project? Okay, Grant. Communications. Y'all remember the song Janet Jackson, What Have You Done For Me Lately? A long time ago. A lot of you have been helping your directors on, on something that comes together every year. We're trying to take it a little bit more seriously. This is the second time we produce a year end, we're going to call it the yearbook. It's essentially the greatest hits of what Region 10 does. We're in the middle of that creation process now. All of our team is highly involved, and it starts with every single one of you communicating through the year with your directors and being prepared to brag on what you do. And it's something that helps us tell folks why we're good at what we do, why they need to keep using us, why we're proud of the service we deliver. So one thing I'm big on is not just some of the directors have been meeting with me and I've been getting some of the quotes that tell our story, but then there are other things that you're doing that, that can give me metrics, can give our team things that say, we served, we did 22 of these trainings, but in this coming year we're going to do 30. And we served this, this kind of population, but we expanded it and did it in a different way this year. Through the year, please be keeping notes on what you're doing so that when your director comes to you at around September, October, November and says we're involved in this project, you can say all the great things we're up to. Um, Gordon has asked us to group this year's book under the heading students. What are we doing for them? What kind of services do we provide? Solutions. What unique solutions did we deliver to our districts and charters? And so that's this year's book. And maybe next year will be different. But we always want to be thinking in terms of what we're doing that we need to tell people about. Thank you. Training. <laughs> you haven't told us about Ben and the Diamond yet. <laughs> okay, the social community has, has told you about their denim and diamond theme on the door decorating. And I don't know if they're playing off us or us off them, but this year's holiday party on the 16th at South Fork Ranch is under the Denim and Diamonds theme. There are many times we ask Gordon if we can wear jeans to work. And this time, on the 16th, that Friday, you can. And it's going to be a sort of cowboy country themed event. Rhinestones, dress up, have fun. Um, but we'll have the Barack Obama middle school band that gave us jazz last year that we're going to country it up this year. We want to see you in your boots and cowboy hats and things like that. We're going to have a great 
um, we sort of upgraded our meal at the last minute because we had some extra budget, so we took it to, from burgers and chicken sandwiches to chicken fried steak. So we, lost it. Um, we got special region 10 cupcakes we're going to make. What other questions can I answer? It's going to be good. And wait. <coughs> Yeah. Christy Householder. Um, my specialty is blindness and visual impairment. And just to let you guys know, one of those young adults over there, we started serving when he was three years old. Aww. That makes me feel okay. <laughs> <laughs> All but successful at the same time, time right? right? Okay. What are charities are we supporting this this holiday season? <laughs> That's interesting. Elsa, where are you? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever tosses it to me, I toss it to you. Um, the Angel Tree Project and some of the things that are coming together also leads the effort with the Christmas Committee. A lot of work being done over the last couple of months already that just intensifies to you tell folks what's coming. Okay, the Angel Tree will be up on the 17th, which is next week, so on the 18th, you can come by and do your Angel Tree. The food bank that we're are doing this year is rainbow based that we did last year. It's um, the homeless kids from the ISD that live in the hotel. So for a lot of hand items and also uh, and hygiene stuff. So yeah, so that would be and the stockings you were told about that because of the, uh, one of the ways we're expanding our service this year is with the purchase of stockings. They wanted us to purchase 110 stockings, so that's what we're going to go do. They wanted all the same color, so we're going to go down and to the store and buy 110 stockings for them so they can stuff them and give them to the children. Christmas Eve. Christmas Day. Huh? Rainbow Days. Rainbow Days. So, so oh. that would be... Is Rainbow Days also the beneficiary to the, the angel tree? No, the angel tree is Rockwell County. So we got Rockwell County. Head start in Rockwell. Christy, did that answer all the questions? Thank you. Thank you. He's about to go sit down. If you have any more questions, you got to ask now. <laughs> we can find him if we need him. Okay, HR questions. Before I hand it to Scott and let him start talking, anything on HR? <laughs> Yeah, we are not going to let him talk about irregular part-time employees. <laughs> and if you're not aware of that little issue, you're be glad. Be glad, yes. Be glad. Just be happy. Be glad. Don't worry. Make a song out of it. You could. You could make a song out of it. All right. We can hit a couple of key points here on health matters that we just finished up. Uh, they did have a problem with their reporting portal. It's up and running again, so you should be able to get not only this one, but if you've done it in previous years, they'll have that information there also. Crucial uh, conversations. Tony Garrett, please stand up. <laughs> Beyond exceptional job in trying to make sure the crucial conversations we have done spent so much money and so much investment and so much time making the cultural piece of Region 10, but what we don't want to happen is all the training happened and then never get used again. And Tony, and, and with her expertise and with the Creative Communications Department, have put together a number of videos, which you've probably seen, of you. We use you as the, as the stars in those videos. And they were done up in the studio, and they take each one of the basic elements of crucial conversations, and in five minutes, kind of refresh your memory of it. This year, Tony came up with a, another spectacular idea. And the idea was, let's take a video of a real-life situation in a real-life environment uh, and have questions along with it, and it only be about five to seven minutes long, so that you could use it for, for example, at the beginning of a, of a meeting. And you can go in, you can see two of our employees uh, have a conflict, resolve the conflict, talk about what issues they use to resolve the conflict, and then you have questions along the way that you can, uh, if it's already pre-planned, that you can discuss. All on Region 10 Connect, all on the HR page on Region 10 Connect, 
simply go there and anybody can use them at any time and we encourage you to do that. And tell them, thank you very much. Thank you everybody. Okay, so the bad weather test, Leslie's working on that, and she's uh, updated all the telephone uh, contacts, and here very soon there will be a test to check the bad weather system and be sure that you're getting all your information correct. And so watch your emails for that to come up. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to bring up regarding <coughs> coming up in December and January, a little bit ahead of time, but just to get everybody thinking about it again. Uh, if you go to Region 10 Connect again and look at the evaluation process, you know that it says in December that we're looking to look at our job descriptions, both as the employee and as a supervisor, and start reviewing them to see are they still accurate, are they exactly what we're doing, and because that's going to be reviewed in that process. And by January the 9th this year, since the second Monday of January, January the 9th is when the employee reflection form is due to your supervisor. That's all on Region 10 Connect, the HR page, go to the evaluation section and it's all there. Okay, any questions for me? We're in the holiday spirit, we're <laughs> Okay, now, before we start the next part, dessert's on the table over there, it's ice cream, so you gotta go get it, and get it eaten. Cookie Monster ice cream? It's <laughs> Denise says that the uh, Dr. Pepper chocolate chip is not any good. Leave it. She'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds great. Yes, right. It's Alice. And I am the Vice President. Then we've got a dolphin, and over here is Cookie Monster. Okay. Go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 what? We're back. We're going to have to do this next part. If you want to get up and go get a little more ice cream, you can do that. Before I start reading all the compliments, Lizzie's got some social committee announcements she needs to make. Well, as you know, it's getting to that holiday time, and everyone overwhelmingly wanted to do the door decorating again. So, is, are y'all happy about that? Lizzie <laughs> crowd, it's also the crowd. It's a voluntary. So I sent an email out the other day that had two flyers attached, and one was about the door decorating, which will start on December 5th, and we will have, or we have a theme. This was all the social committee, we all decided this. So Den of the Diamonds is our theme. Because of our Christmas, uh, our, our holiday luncheon, we're doing Denim and Diamonds theme. So we want you to give it a holiday flair, too. So I cannot wait to see what some of y'all do, because last year it was just so awesome. Um, so we will have three winners. We will have a winner here in this building, one in the Amherst building, and then one for the off-site for the people who aren't here at the Jackery. And we're going to ask something. If you win, you will get a plaque. Uh, to hang in your sweet office suit for year round. So, and we're going to do like, you know, years on it, like kind of like a little trophy. And so, um, I know that some people were saying they wanted some, some recognition. So, we're going to do that. And then uh, you'll get to go first in line at the luncheon as well. And then the other thing, instead of the tacky sweater, we, we decided to change it up and do tacky hats. So we have some things for that also, uh, tackiest of course, for ha tacky holiday hat. The one best related to denim and diamonds and then most creative. So I, I'll, uh, once again, cannot wait to see what you come up with because those sweaters last year were pretty hilarious. Um, so we'll do the thing, same thing. You'll take a picture and email it to me and I'll send out a uh, email the next Monday with a like, kind of like a survey so everyone can vote and then we'll have a winner for that as well. And then um, 
We are just very excited to enter this holiday season, and the social committee uh, loves taking your suggestions, and so if you have some, just send them to me, and then I'll share them with the committee as we continue to bring the holiday spirit to Region 10. <laughs> If you're on the um, social committee, raise your hand. Y'all have fun on that committee? I thought so. Okay. The first compliment, thank you, whatever it happens to be. If you are a veteran of the United States Armed Forces or you are currently Reserve National Guard, would you stand, please? If you read the Taylor Tangent yesterday, you know that this is a month of giving thanks as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't just center around one day, and I, I appreciate what you all have done and currently do in terms of allowing us to live the way we live in a democracy, even when maybe after Tuesday we were happy or we were sad, we still live in a country that we appreciate and it's because of folks like you who step up day in and day out and do what has to be done in what is often uncomfortable circumstances, and we need to rec recognize that. Today's the perfect day to do that. I want to paraphrase uh, one of our superintendents who sent a blog post out earlier today that I read, and he talked about celebrating heroes without capes. Because I don't know if you noticed or not, but a lot of these folks who stood, they didn't want the recognition, and they wanted to sit down as quickly as they could. <laughs> but we need to recognize our heroes who don't have capes, okay? Because it wasn't about being a hero, it was about doing what they felt was right as a part of our armed forces. And I very much appreciate what you all sacrificed and did. And did. So thank you to our veterans and our activists. <laughs> Region 10, and so when you see our Zell Ball, um, now you have to be here early in the morning because his work hours are like 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. Right but um, if you see our Zell, thank you when you have the opportunity. Uh, I think that means we've crossed five generations of veterans uh, in terms of uh, service. First in the armed forces and now service here at Region 10. So, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to tell you that this is the stack of compliments I'm going to read. Yes, I know this takes a little while, but it is so much fun for me to read them, share them with you, and for those of you, you understand when you get when you stand and you get this read about you, it, it feels good even if you're embarrassed about it. <laughs> And I want to do that. Now, I will tell you that I had, I would have had, if I had printed them all out, a stack about this deep of Region 10 people thanking other Region 10 people. Okay? I've read some of those in the past. I'm not reading them today. But here's my, here's what we are going to do. We're going to create a special spot on the R10 Connect. And I'm going to post those when I get them. I love reading them, and I want you to continue sending them to me. It's absolutely incredible what you do for each other, as well as what you do for our LEAs and our other clients. Now, I do want to point out one group, and I want to make sure we thank them, because sometimes internal service folks get maligned because it never works quite right. You know, the, the, the payroll office always missed that one. Or the 
uh, communications office, oops, that was at 11, not 11.30, or something like that. That sometimes happens. It's not intentional. It's never intentional when it happens, but sometimes it just happens. The group I want to point out, the one internal group I want to point out right now, is our technology staff. Okay? DK and his folks, when we crashed, and there's no other way to put it, when we crashed at 4.15 Wednesday, Oh my gosh, what a mess. Your phones didn't work, your computers didn't work. I was trying to teach a class for UNT in this building that night, and I couldn't even get a projector to work, okay? Now, not only did they figure out what the problem was and solve the problem, they did that into the night, okay? They helped me solve my temporary problem Lizzie was running a thing over at Abrams. They helped her solve that in a temporary fashion so we could go on Wednesday night. But they stayed after 9 o'clock. The technology staff stayed late. And their commitment was they were going to stay all night if, it, if that's what it took to make sure that when we had 150-something people in this room yesterday morning for a workshop, we were ready to go. Now, you came in yesterday and your phone worked and your computer worked and all the technology in the meeting room worked because of the fact that they made the commitment they were going to be in service to us and make sure we could do what we do day in and day out. And so I want to say a special thank you to DK and all the folks who stayed that night. And I won't make them stand, okay? But if you see one of our internal technology people wandering around, just know that they put in the extra extra time to make sure you could do what you needed to do when you got here yesterday. So, thank you. Okay, now the last time we did this, I think about three quarters of the people I was reading compliments on weren't here. We'll see if we did any better this time around with uh, the folks who are here. First of all, Lane Pepe. And we didn't start off very well, did we? Okay. Here's, this is actually from a blog post from a parent organization, the Parent Resource Network, that has an event annually. They actually have multiple, multiple events annually. And Lane went and uh, presented to this group of, of parents. And here's the blog post, okay? Called out by name, called out by Region 10 on this blog. Everybody else listed was just a generic, thank you for doing this, thank you for doing that. But they called Lane out by name. Lane Pethick was awesome as usual. He never fails to abound with energy and insight into being a part of a special needs child with behavior challenges his life. He had the audience enthralled and entertained for the entire time. I wish I could bottle his energy and his way of understanding the world of special needs. If you ever get a chance to hear him speak, don't walk, run to hear Lane Bethel. <laughs> Barb Kiefer and Kamala Walker. Stand up. <laughs> Kamala's probably on the phone helping somebody with their certification right now. So, okay. Barb, tell us the specialty. I do uh, professional educator preparation for counselors and diagnosticians. Okay, here it is from Marshy Murdoch, Mansfield ISD, not even in Region 10. I start there. You got to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Words cannot express the feelings I have for all that you have done for us aspiring counselors. You have made our journey enlightening, fun, and worthwhile. I received a counseling position from Mansfield Summit High School on Friday afternoon, and I am elated. All I could do was sit and reflect on how you strategically and progressively fed us all this information and made it fun. Thank you so much. I am going to make you proud by being the best campus counselor that I can be. And then there's the P.S. And please tell Camilla Walker how much we appreciate her patience with us. <laughs> Chris Canals and Lisa Burton. 
Chris is here, Lisa's on the job somewhere, right? Okay, so you'll have to take credit. I, yes, I'll take there you go. <laughs> okay. But I'll tell you that Lisa Burton is a current active uh, yes. Yes, she is. major in the National Guard. From JoLynn Hughes, the principal at Butler Elementary in Quinlan ISD. It was important to me to get in touch with you regarding our recent experience with Lisa Burton. Lisa spent the entire day on our campus Tuesday working with our alternative certification teachers. I have been so impressed with those three teachers and the level of their performance and knowledge they brought into the classrooms here at Butler. After meeting Lisa, now I know why they are a step ahead of all of the other teachers I've experienced from other alt-cert alt programs. Lisa is top-notch. Thank you for sharing Lisa with us and for leading such a strong program. We are stronger because of you and because of Lisa. JoLynn Hughes, Clinton High School. Educators of Texas, ASIC, but also as a former employee of a service center, I won't mention which one, <laughs> which I feel gives me a unique perspective of the value of your personnel. I am sending this to thank you for allowing Marissa Erickson to present at the ASIC conference. As a member of the program planning committee for ASIC, we at times find it difficult to locate qualified presenters. ESC folks are always sought after by our members, and we know will be a big draw because the expertise is work on my <laughs> of the expertise they bring about subjects that matter to the audience of state and federal program leaders who attend our conference. Marissa certainly filled those expectations for those who attended her sessions. Please know we appreciate you allowing her to present for us. I just wanted you to know what she did, that she did an excellent job and represented ESC 10 in a wonderful manner to a statewide audience. John Emmerich, New Caney ISD. Yeah. As is normal for Marissa, she's also sharing the compliment with Becky, who was also part of the yes. group that presented that day. Okay, if you're in Head Start, you just have to stand because they didn't put a name on this. If you're in Head Start, stand up. See, they're shy. Put them in front of the little kids until they're not shy anymore. Okay, here we go. This is from the Head Start. This is about Head Start in Midlothian ISD. This is actually to Lucy Mayers, who I think is the site coordinator out there, right? Okay. Good afternoon, Lucy. I just wanted to tell you thank you for everything that you and the Head Start program have done for me and my family. My girls are so happy, and they love their teachers. They are really excited about going to school and look forward to going each day. I'm so happy because I know the program is very beneficial for them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lucy. And it's signed by a parent of a head, two Head Start students in the Vulcan ISD. Share the high five with everybody else over there, okay? Charlene Thomas and Enrique Chole. Nope. Carly. She goes by Carly in the Okay. Oh. Okay, share this with her later. All right. Thank you so much. It was with, it is with deep heartfelt appreciation and thanks that we send this email to you on behalf of all of our Irving ISD bilingual dual dual language institute participants and elementary world languages team. Our event would not have been as successful as it was without the teamwork and dedication shown by all 
of you who made it possible. One being you specifically. We received many great reviews and want to say thank you, for without you this could not have happened. With deep and heartfelt thanks and appreciation, Lucy Robles, Elementary World Languages Coordinator, Irving ISD. Karen Ramos, Deputy Director of Education, Dallas County Juvenile Justice Department. That's our charter school that's actually housed in the juvenile justice uh, prison in Dallas County. Okay? Lizzie, I want you to know that I attended the charter summit this summer and it was excellent. I especially liked doc Dr. Tate's presentation. Immediately upon returning to my district, I ordered her entire set of books in all content areas. We are using those strategies as we do our staff development for this year. Now, I see Lizzie pointing at somebody. Jackie Bynum, Jackie Bynum stand up. Yep. Share the compliment. Karen Ramos, Deputy Director of Education, Dallas County Juvenile Department. Wonderful. Yes. Okay, I won't make everybody stand up, but everybody turn to the person on your right and give them a pat on the back. And then turn to the person on your left and give them a pat on the back. <laughs> to Region 10, I would like to express my appreciation to the Region 10 ESC for the tremendous amount of support you give our school district. Yesterday's news that Bells Elementary received all six distinctions in state accountability brought much excitement to our small town. We couldn't have done this without the instructional support, the administrative support, and the technology support we received from Region 10. There are so many examples of the assistance you provide day in and day out, as well as so many people from your organization who deserve many, many thanks. It would take me a while to list everyone. Thank you for the partnership we have developed over the years. I never feel like Bells ISD is less important to your organization than any other school, just because of our size and location. Everyone at Region 10 is always ready and willing to help us, even if that means driving 75 miles north to sit beside our administrator or one of our teachers and lead us along as we learn new ideas. Tricia Meek. Bell's ISD Assistant Denise Butel. Good afternoon. I'm not sure who is directly responsible, but I just wanted to say thank you and great job on today's meeting of curriculum directors. It was a great meeting well-paced, informative, we had lunch and we had opportunities to sit down and talk with our colleagues. Very, very nice work, thanks. Brian Fry, Curriculum Director, Palmer ISB. <laughs> Kim LeBaron, Lizzie Asbury. Wow. <laughs> Dynamic duo from Administrative <laughs> Service. All the money. <laughs> 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 please extend this was sent please extend my thanks for these great events this is from an administrative assistant to a superintendent um, and this one was actually retiring but she sent her thanks anyway please extend my thanks for the, these great events for superintendent secretaries they are fun they are informative and is much needed respite from the daily grind in our office Special thanks to Kim and Lizzie for all they do. Chandra Shaw and Vicki Reynolds. See the looks on faces when I can't see what I call these things. They look at each other like they're going to the principal's office. <laughs> now, you know? This was actually sent.
sent to Robin, and she shared it with me. Thank you for recommending Chandra Shaw and Becky Reynolds for our staff development session yesterday. Our teachers were very impressed with both presentations. The presenters were well prepared, enthusiastic, and kept the teachers engaged the whole time. We are happy to report that our teachers gave the presenters very, very high scores and very positive comments. Thank you for sending such outstanding people. And for Associate Superintendent, the Diocese, Catholic Diocese of Dallas. Brittany Garrick and Melody Lloyd. This is also for Man Core from the Catholic Diocese. Thank you for making it possible for us, and was sent to Sandy Whitley, and so you gotta extend it a little bit. Thank you for making it possible for us to have Brittany and Melody at our professional development session yesterday. Both presenters were excellent. Our teachers really did enjoy the presentations. The preparation was obvious and excellent. Both were enthusiastic and full of great ideas for our teachers. It's always a pleasure to work with Region 10. Thank you for sharing the qual quality of people you have at Region 10. <laughs> Travis Waddell. Travis is also one of our veterans. Sheets, Principal Wolf City High School. I would like to take a minute of your this was directed to me. I would like to take a minute of your time to comment on the positive influence that Travis Waddell has had on both my campus at Wolf City High School and me as a professional educator. I am a reservist and was called to active duty in 2008 and continued to serve on active duty until 2015. When I returned to my position as principal at Wolf City High School, as you can imagine, there were many educational changes in my absence of seven years. Star, not tax, personal graduation plans, etc., etc. Unfortunately, I returned to my school in early August with less than two weeks before the students reported back. And with this compressed reentry, I didn't even have time for any professional development as an administrator in order to catch up after those seven years. Travis has made multiple trips to Wolf City in order to address a wide variety of questions and issues that I had. His advice and guidance was instrumental in restructuring our course offerings in ways that allowed for CTE weighted funding and other changes here at Wolf City High School. As one veteran to another, he understood my needs, and I could keep going with many more accolades about Travis. I have already taken enough of your time. The point of this email is to let it be known how much I, as well as my school, have benefited from the mentorship provided by Travis. I wholeheartedly believe that he was crucial in my reintegration into the education profession. Typically, these come by email. This one was handwritten. Okay? This one's handwritten, and you will hear both the panic and the relief as I read it. To everyone from Region 10 who helped, I cannot begin to say thank you enough and express my appreciation. This is from one of our data people in one of our districts. Getting my data back. Oh, my. <laughs> I was in tears, and Joe knows this. By the way, never read Joanne Thornton. Neither one here? And I'm not. Joe knows I had to go outside and have a cry. All I could see was 400 plus or so kids' data gone, teacher data gone. Health data, gone. Everything, gone. <laughs> Joe called back and says, here's what we are going to do. Everything is now happy again now. 
Thank you again, everyone who helped us. Joe, thanks for letting, not letting me cry in the end. It'll be okay. I cried, but it's still great now. I appreciate you all so much. Susan Carroll, Hal Elementary School. <laughs>
This book is hard for any first grader. He is able to read it seamlessly. What amazing things happening in Head Start at Palmer Elementary. We're trying to share that email, that uh, video on R10 Connect because it, it was done secretly by somebody holding their cell phone because they didn't want to disturb him as he read and it is a really cute video. Okay, last one, Cindy Lee. <coughs> Yep, another head start one, okay? This was uh, sent to Kelly Spark. I wanted to share a compliment that Cindy Lee received today. There was an ARD meeting in McKinney this afternoon that was of some concern. That's principal speak for, uh-oh. When Cindy Lee arrived to attend the ARD, the principal came up and hugged her and said, you have no idea how glad I am. <laughs> Folks, you make an impact, you make an impact day in and day out on the lives of the students in Region 10 and across the state of Texas and other places, and you need to appreciate that fact. Even if there wasn't one today about you, there could have been. It's just nobody had time to write it about you, okay? Know that I appreciate it, and the folks in our districts appreciate you and everything you do every single day. So give thanks for each other. <laughs> like I give thanks for you each and every day. There's some cookies, drinks, uh, ice cream, more baked potatoes. Good stuff left and as you exit and finish the day. By the way, I need to say thank you to everybody for allowing us to change this from Monday to today. It allowed me to go be dad at the state marching band contest for my son. <laughs> Y'all have a great afternoon.